friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time, and I'm sorry I've been behind on my garden updates. Uh, there's several reasons why. One is because the weather has just been really soggy and wet, which that part is normal for June here in Rain Country. But what's not so normal is the cold that has slowed so many of my things down. But some things, as you can see the grapevines behind me, remain uh, pretty unaffected. They seem to realize the time of the year, even if the cold doesn't affect them. Okay, starting from this corner of the deck, where our walkway comes up on, that's Patrick's shop. So in case you don't, you're new here, this is his shop here and the house is behind me a new addition i got a couple of these is honeysuckle i've been meaning to get honeysuckle for a long time love the smell it has a nice flavor and it has a lot of medicinal properties that i'll be talking about in a future video hopefully hopefully sometime this summer johnny jump ups is what these are or the viola tricolor you know they've been still doing good the reason that you don't see a lot of flowers is because i keep them picked every day and i've been like i said in the last video i actually have been coming out and even picking them back to here and drying these parts too because they also the leaves also can be used in teas and whatever else they have a nice flavor but what that does is going to encourage it to bush out more and make more flowers so i don't know if you look back to when we first patrick first bought these for me they were much smaller and they've bushed out a lot since and by the end of the summer they should be completely filling up this whole area. I also did buy a few more times this year because I'm loving thyme so much but decided I didn't want to actually put it in the ground yet because how cold it's been. So I've been, two of them I've got in this pot here right up against the shop where it can stay a little more protected and warm. So this nasturtium right here, this one of the, the dwarf nasturtiums that turns a beautiful burgundy color as you can see in this photo right here it's doing pretty good and i think part of the reason why uh, compared to the other ones that is is that it's right up next to the shop and so it's staying pretty well protected these beans are doing okay so far i see some little flower buds starting to form you can see back in there and so far they've got up to there almost to the gutter not far from the gutter even though there's not a whole lot of foliage on those vines there will be soon if it ever ever warms up. You might have seen the video that just published. This is uh, the shelving that Patrick built for me uh, so I could put pots like these. Now in here I have planted some lettuce seeds so none of those have come up yet. And then I've got uh, some transplanted, uh, this is like a volunteer a Johnny Jump Up that I found in one of the pots. And some violets just self-seeded. I got a couple more over here so I just planted them in the front just to get something in there until the lettuces come up at least. And then uh, the store, pansies have been really hard to find, the big ones especially. So not a lot of flowers on them because what I do is after I get them and plant them, I let them sit for a couple days and then I take all of the flowers off. All of them and I'm actually going to come back out here after this video and take what's there. So these are new plants so that's why they're very small looking right now but one thing i do like even though even though the uh, pansies the bigger cultivated ones like these don't have quite as many medicinal properties as your smaller wild violas they um they dry up beautifully and there's just much more to them so i like to do a mix of the two oh and then this is another this is just common time i went ahead and got another one of those planted it there for now where it can stay more protected up next to the shop and then moved a couple of my basils from the greenhouse out here to see how they would do here even though it doesn't get a ton of sun it should be more protected okay now i'm starting from the other corner close to the house and the grapes as i said they're doing great my blueberries though have been very depressing a lot of this stuff has just really got to me because you can't help but feel like you're the failure but you can see all the red this is actually with the blueberry starting to look better the two worst ones are this one here and hardly any berries. They're just very, very sparse. I should be picking blueberries by now, by the way. And then none, no ripe ones yet. By now I should have had, you know, maybe at least a quart picked. And look at this one. They, it's got so cold here, my blueberries have thought it was fall. 
This one is a lot more green, but look at the berries. Now, I did go and put some extra uh, blood meal in each pot, more than a, another cup in each one of the pots to see if that would help. I think it's helped some. That might be why I'm seeing some of the color come back in, in some of the bushes like this one here. Um, and yes, I do intentionally allow the dandelion and the red clover to grow in the pots because I think that actually helps and it just gives me a nice clean place to harvest the leaves and the flowers off of these. But talking to the guy at the nursery, he asked me how my blueberries were doing before I even said anything and I said, not good. He goes, Did they all have they all turned red? And I said, yep, because they all think it's fall. But that made me feel good because then I realized it's not just me. <laughs> it has been abnormally cold here. This is a, just along the steps where the handrail would be. I'm actually even getting, uh, starting to get grape clusters in here. Normally I don't get grapes along the, along the steps here. It's really rare, but on both sides you can see grapes. So thankfully the grapevines are doing really good. And looking at them from this side, the currants are doing okay. I think they should be getting starting to get ripe by now, but again, just like so many other things, they've come to a halt. My herbs are doing okay. Most of them, you can see the lamb's ear is doing really good. All the mints are doing good. There's a spearmint there. But my main garden bed, this is my other one of my other sources of just, it's just been very discouraging. I only have one, maybe three of the corns I planted have come up. You see a lot of plantain that has self-seeded all over the place. So this is one thing I want to say. Those of you who have bought plantain seed from me, do not plant them in your garden. That was a mistake I made a couple of years ago was I moved a nice plantain from the yard into the garden bed. Should have never, ever, ever done that. It throws seeds everywhere. So plant them anywhere but in your any of your garden beds because they will take over. And the reason you're not seeing a lot of cleanup on those is because I can't really do anything. I'm waiting to see, cause I planted a bunch of beans out here cause I started getting nervous that the corn wasn't gonna germinate. So I planted beans. I planted a whole bunch of stuff in here. I don't wanna disturb the soil right now. I'm waiting to see if any of this stuff is gonna grow, but I'm starting to get to the point where it's taking way too long. And I'm thinking I may just have to retill all this up and just plant things I know that will grow later in the season and will do well. But you know, some of the stuff you see, you can see some borage that's coming up from being self-seeded, some kale that I transplanted from the greenhouse that came to a stop, and even uh, the lamb's quarter, same thing. See my mojito mint, I just been cutting a bunch off of this. Oh, let me show you this. Okay, so this, this is another sign that things haven't been right. That is one of, used to be one of my healthiest echinacea plants. It started out looking great earlier in the spring, but then when the weather turned really cold, it did this. It kind of scared me. Uh, now it's starting to warm up a little bit. It's still much colder than it should be, but it's warming up enough that the echinacea here is starting to grow. But this is the worst one. All of my echinacea has done this to some degree, but none of them as badly as this one, and I believe I know why. So coming back over here to where the lamb's ear is, look at this echinacea, much healthier. You hardly see any leaves on there. Here's one, here's one right here that curled up. And all my echinacea plants did that to some degree, but why does this one look so much healthier and all my other ones look so much healthier? I believe it's because they've been protected in some way. Like in this case, the lamb's ear growing all around it. The mint on that side has helped insulate it this is my hypothesis anyway. Now, coming back over here to this echinacea, uh, until recently, it was completely exposed on all sides, but the mint has been coming up, so it's been kind of shielding it from this side, and the catnip on this side. So I think that's part of the reason, the other reason why it's starting to do a little bit better, because it's just a little bit more protected. So coming over here, we never did, because it got so cold, I left the polycarbonate on either side of the beans because uh, you can see what everything else has been doing. So here's the difference. And the sad part is it makes it a little bit difficult to get in here and get all the weeds. But look at this. See this borage right here? All the borage in here between the polycarbonate is doing what it should do this time of the year. 
where the borage out there is all only like that tall. So that shows you, that's what it should look like. Now this borage looks pretty normal, uh, but I think it's again because it's got the polycarbonate right next to it that's keeping it from you know, getting too much exposure to this cold. But even the beans that are starting to grow up between the polycarbonate, should they should look better than that. But I'm starting to see some growth again in my sunflowers, but it looks like this one here is already gonna get a flower and it's really not tall enough for it to be doing that. So the growth on these is really stunted quite a bit. Um, even for the marshmallows, they should, I should have a lot more foliage on my, on my marshmallows than I do, but at least they're still healthy. But of course the peas, peas don't mind it. Peas don't mind cold at all. In fact, look, I got flowers. So that's one thing at least that's doing really good are my peas. Potatoes are doing good, except for the fact that I have not been able to pile stuff on them like I normally would, none of my potatoes. <laughs> normally I'll pile great heaps of uh, grass clippings on them and that's my way of hilling them and it works really good, but we've really had no grass clippings to put on any of my potatoes. Lettuces don't mind cold, so the lettuces are doing good. In fact, I really need to make a salad tonight because look at all that. <laughs> Besides, I have some homemade ranch dressing in the refrigerator that needs to get used up. It's been really cold in the greenhouse too, but not so cold that uh, the tomatoes don't mind. The only reason the tomatoes look a little gray is because, again, this is where the chickens take their dust baths. It's been the only dry place they've had to do that. So they throw dirt all over everything. And then here are some self-seeded kale. I would like to move out to the, I was gonna move this out to the main garden too, but when I saw what happened to the other kale I moved out there, I figured I'd just leave this. It doesn't seem to be bothering the tomatoes, so I'm, I'm just not gonna bother. I'm not gonna worry about it. I might just continue to grow it in here anyway. Got some lamb's quarter, some borage. This is all stuff that has self-seeded. But the tomatoes, you know, for here, they're doing pretty good, especially considering how cold and unsunny it has been. All right, let's go here over here where things look good, actually look good, and that's the West Side Herb Garden. So horseradish, feverfew, catnip. I'm letting a lot of my catnip go to flower. I have a whole bunch dehydrated up from previous years that I'm not gonna worry about it so much this year because I'm hoping to collect seed from that this year again to put up on the store. More feverfew, marshmallow, uh, the sage, remember this? Um, I did hack it way back and it has been starting to fill in towards the center. I'm going to be cutting it back even farther. I did harvest a bunch off a couple days ago to dehydrate. A couple of rosemary's back there. The peppermint, I keep it, keeping it cut back because I'm uh, dehydrating up lots of peppermint. More rosemary, more rosemary, lamb's ear, elderberry, mojito mint, Lavender with spit bugs all over it this time of year. Spit bugs are on everything. More lavender. This is oregano all through here. Lemon balm. Uh, another elderberry. So I have two, one that's smaller and two that are just massive. My old, old lavender. More lamb's ear, more orange mint. I have a video that's going to be coming out in about three weeks about d uh, different mints and how I use them and the benefits. So be watching for that. My other sage that I also need to get in there, I'm gonna wait on this one though, but I'm gonna try to uh, cut it way back and bring it in farther again so it can start bushing out in that center. More feverfew, more catnip. My rose that should have started blooming a long time ago. This is, even though the rose looks okay, but this is just another one of those things that has been really stunted because of our cold weather. Now, one of the things that has not been stunted is this valerian. It's got flowers everywhere. Look at those ones up there blooming. And the, this is the valerian I'm gonna be saving the seed from for the store because this is my healthiest valerian plant. And now that I know it does make really good viable seed and then how to properly uh, prepare them for planting to get a good germination, I'll definitely be putting those up on the store. And then over here, I have another honeysuckle so I bought two of them at our local nursery. That's all they had. But this one here had, it was broken when I got it. So I just went ahead and got it and then took that and put that piece in here. I put some root hormone on there. 
So we'll see how that does. That is a mixture of sand and peat. That is apparently what you're supposed to do. I've never actually tried doing a cutting like that before. I just thought I would experiment. I got two more cuttings. I'm trying by just soaking in a glass of water to see if they'll get some root. Oh, by the way, this fern, I never talk about it because I don't think about it, but that's just something that came up on its own years ago, and I love it. You know, it dies back in the winter. But now again, another dwarf nasturtium that's doing beautifully. Yet, that one is not. <laughs> Go figure. The gooseberries, I haven't been finding any more of those caterpillars, but they did chew up the leaves quite a bit. But the berries, the berries are looking good. They're getting bigger, and I can see a couple of them starting to turn red. Strawberries, again, I should be, we have picked a couple of, of red stra ripe strawberries so far, but just two. So here we are, end of June. We should be getting a lot more ripe strawberries. But this cold, look at the leaves. Look at this. That's what it's doing. But my peppermint, of course, is doing good. More sage right there, oregano. And the weeds, the weeds are doing awesome. All of my fruit trees, all of them out here, have lost their fruit because of the cold. All of them. Even my quince tree that was just loaded with fruit. Look at it. Look how sad it looks. It's just been too dang cold. The wet's one thing, the cold is another. The rhubarb, even though it's, it's doing good uh, for the most part, if you look right here, right at the edge of that rhubarb plant, the, the leaf is turned red. Same thing here. This shouldn't be. At least these two zucchini plants here I'm surprised that they're still growing. These other three, I started later. I think these three were from my own seed and those were from Baker Creek seed. They're doing okay, they haven't died, but they've very stunted. Potatoes are doing fine. They'd be doing a lot better if I had grass clippings I could throw on there like I normally would. I, you can see some, I've been putting the rhubarb leaves around there and some of the grass I've been trying to clean up out of this section here I've been tossing on there but last year it was great because we were able to mow the property had time to get out there and rake all the grass and brought a huge truckload of grass clippings home and piled it on those potatoes and boy they love that well that's all for today I realize it's definitely been the good the bad and the ugly about gardening for 2020 today hopefully uh, things will start warming up for us here in a couple weeks usually Usually after the 4th of July is when we start getting some nicer weather anyway. So hopefully we'll get the warmth with that as well. And some of my other things can start taking off. And we'll see about that main garden. I really am serious about thinking about just starting all over with that main bed. Not Well, not completely. I'll leave the rutabagas and some of the things that are doing good. But just some of the areas like where I've got the corn planted, just till it up and start over. Uh, it's just been discouraging. Oh yes, and the apple trees, I didn't even show you those. Uh, our little smaller apple tree started out looking beautiful. He had huge blooms all over it. Looked like it was gonna have tons of apples. A good chunk of those just withered up and fell off. And same thing with our older apple tree that last year we got so many apples. I mean, the most, more apples than ever before. We're only getting a handful this year. Now I realize that's usually normal when you've got a really good harvest one year. Oftentimes the next year on a trees like that, you'll, you might not get as much. The same thing happens with our grapes. We might get two years of just tons of grapes and then the next year just get a few and then the next year get tons again. So they do go through cycles, but I am still thinking that seeing what all these other fruit trees did, the blueberries and, and all the various other things that have either come to a stand still or just withered up uh, it's the cold and I know it's not just me I've talked to several other gardeners in the area that have said the same thing so hopefully the, my next garden update will be a little bit more positive but I, I do have to say I am grateful for those things that are doing really good I'm grateful I have the rhubarb I'm grateful my grapes and my tomatoes are looking really good and various other and my peas of course too I got to be thankful for that and not get depressed about the things that just aren't doing as good this year but you know what this is real life and this is why you have to start gardening early and also not let a bad year like this hold you up from trying again next year because next year could be completely different for just like with the echinacea that's the first time i've 
ever, ever seen my echinacea do that. Anyway, I hope you're enjoying my video series and if you're interested in what's been going on beforehand to where we got to where we are now, you can go ahead and check out the previous videos in this series that I will link to down below, Garden 2020. Okay, well please share with me how your gardens are doing this year. Have you been seeing some big changes due to some weird weather like we're having here? I'd like to hear about it or at least read about it. So anyway, thanks for watching. Take care and God bless. Thank you.